Welcome to Senate Finance. Um, today, looks like it might be slightly less weighty than the last few days, but um, Catherine is here. And as we've worked through, and it's gotten worse as time has gone on and COVID hit, and the urgency of getting as much broadband out as possible for telehealth and remote learning and remote working um, has become very obvious. Uh, what also became obvious is when I have a tax bill, I have a staff person I can call up and say, explain this tax bill and why it's good and why it's not good to me. When it comes to broadband, the legislature does not have their own person to help them look at plans, look at proposals, look at criticisms of the plans and the proposals. Um, to help us do the kind of evaluation that we need to, and it's become just more urgent as we're working our way through. If we're going to use any kind of COVID money, it has to be up and running by December 31st of this year, which means we need has to be spent. move for at least if we're going to use that grant. So Joint Fiscal has been working and we have um, hired a, a consultant who is working under a very tight time frame to get a report out on June 12th. So we haven't been able to get the actual consultant, but Catherine has been working with them and she's gonna brief us on who the consultant is, what they're doing, what we can expect from them as we go forward. Because I know we're all sensing a certain amount of urgency to do something. Um, we're just having trouble defining something. And there are private area, providers who have proposals. There are citizen members that have ideas. There are the CUDs that are struggling to get up and running. And so we're, we're just trying to figure it all out. So Catherine, the floor is yours. Sure. Um, well, it's good to see you all. Uh, I don't think I've seen some of you virtually, but not all of you collectively. So uh, um, you're correct. Broadband is a challenge. I think everybody understands how important broadband is in the future of Vermont's economy, especially with the COVID uh, crisis. And um, in light of the funds, so the CRF funds have to be spent. The work has to be done by December 30th. It's not clear. They picked the 31st, but they picked December 30th. So. They don't want to work on New Year's Eve. <laughs> there you go. And um, so that is a challenge. And um, in the light of all of the desires to do something with broadband and in light of the changing guidance, um, we worked with uh, Senator Jane Kitchell and Representative Tim Briglin and uh, went through, we we, uh, they interviewed three different consultants. We went, we chose CCG and the main person that we're talking with is a woman named Dana McKenzie who ran the broadband in Minnesota for five or six years. She ran the broadband, I forget what the title was, the organization, the governmental organization that ran it. Doug Dawson is somebody who's been heavily involved in, in um, broadband discussions also. And so we're working with the two of them. I believe, Faith, I sent you a scope of work. I don't know if you can pull it up. Um, Catherine, it's on the website. I've made you a co-host and I'm hoping you can pull it up. Well, okay, I... Have you it, done that before? I have not, but I'm gonna, can I just, I have it in the PDF. Can I just open that? Uh, yeah, you, um, yes, you have to share screen. I apologize, I'm doing 101 other committee That's things. That's fine. I can do this. Let's see. If it works. 
There we go. Does that work? You have. I clicked. You have to hit share screen, the green button on the bottom. Of okay, I have a bunch of things open, so I don't know. I'm click share screen and then. And then you choose which one you want to show. Okay. Why does it not? Uh... We won't spend long doing this. I'll do it if um, if you. Here we go. I think I found it. There we go. Can you all see that now? You're awesome. Yeah, Thank you. we're up. Okay. Learn something new every day. So this is the scope of work that we um, worked out with this um, with CCG, and uh, we'll get to the bottom. But the report is due June twelfth, so that is a very quick turnaround, uh, and it's a fourteen thousand dollar contract. So it's it's um, not going to answer everybody's question. It's not going to cover every single base in, in broadband. This is sort of a quick. Let's get some information and get some assistance on this. So. Um, I'm gonna hit the highlights on the scope of work. All of this work is gonna be done in the context of improving Vermont's broadband capacity in light of the uh, COVID-19 public health issue um, and preparing also for the second wave within this data or resurgence. And now let's get into the specific details of the work. A is the area that they have focused on uh, first and, and primarily is a review and identification of ways that we could spend the CRF funds. Um, they're talk I know they've been talking to other states. They've been um, reading the guidance. And as I think you all know, the guidance has changed and become actually, since we've hired them, the guidance has become more restrictive. Um, so that's an ongoing challenge. It's just a fact of life on this, but they will be coming back with some specific ideas about what we could do that would um, address immediate needs, but also keep in mind the long-term planning and policy goals. So the, the thought here is that you don't wanna spend money on something that isn't gonna help keep you moving towards your long-term goals. Uh, the second piece that they're working on is a review and assessment of the state uh, emergency broadband action plan that I think you all have had presented to you. Uh, by the commissioner. And then the third is sort of a little bit of a broader, the implications for the development of the 10 year plan and other planning efforts uh, for expanded access. Um, so they're touching on those three particular items. Uh, I know they've talked to the commissioner of the Department of Public Service and they've been talking to other people across the state. Um, uh, the final, work to be conducted, D is just was a catch-all that uh, as needed, it wasn't a specific work, but that they can brief people on um, broadband issues and other things that just come up. So that gave, that gave us a little flexibility in the work they were gonna do. And um, the format of the deliverables, both oral and written materials, um, including interim uh, communications, both written and oral. Uh, to discuss specific issues as they come up. And then one or more reports due on it before next, it's next Friday, I think, is that right? Uh, yes. So they basically have a week and a day from today to pull all this together. Um, and they are, um, I, th I think they're gonna be talking to House Energy and Technology this week, maybe maybe tomorrow, I'm not positive about that. And I would, we could certainly have them available for your committee as well, um, if you want to, and especially as ideas um, come forward, I think you'd wanna talk to them. What time tomorrow, do you know, are they talking? You know what, I don't know. Let me go see if I can find it. Um, Cause we might be able to join them, at least some of us might. Yeah, I do know. I think Catherine, I'm staffing that meeting tomorrow. It's from one to three. Okay. Okay. So perhaps we could ask Representative Briglin if we could do that as a joint meeting for those great. that are free here. Thank you, Madam Chair. And we could, okay. The only, you know, the only, I, I think you would want to check in with the chair because I know they have also issued their own, um, I think that has issued a, a memo of ideas, specific ideas they have. And I, okay. um, so they may want to be focused on, I, I don't know what, I don't want to speak for the chair. So I think, yeah, yeah, no, we'd have to ask them, I think. Yeah. And we can always watch the, the link after. You can, I just don't know how much of the conversation <laughs> is um, 
I will broader picture versus their specific. Um, so I'll let you all work that out. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. In terms of this contract that Catherine went over with us, um, what what's the parameter around how much money? What's what's the, what's the structure for how much money could be spent? You mean, you mean when they when we said can you figure out what we can spend CRF funds on? Exactly. Yeah. Because well, it seems we like they could make different proposals based on how much money they had to work with. We were like, go figure it out. I'm I'm just going to tell you that the 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 opportunity has shrunk tremendously with the latest guidance from the feds. So, you know, I think we were all thinking, you know. I don't know. I want to say $100 million. I don't know if it was going to be $100 million, but we're thinking big, big what would the options be? And I think with the latest guidance, it's going to be some small bit uh, that would qualify for, under the CRF guidelines. So that's one of the moving constraints is um, a moving moving goalpost. So we did not we did not give them a we did not give them a guide a guideline. We said think about what go tell us what other people are doing and what would be useful and how can we make it work. And just a quick follow up. Did you said that you were yes. thinking number other than one fifty one hundred? What and, and that part we missed, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. is my is my cells coming cutting in and out? My yes. little bit. Your little voice bit. does. Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop my video then. Okay. And we'll see if that's okay. better. Can you hear me now? Yeah. That better? Okay. yeah. So I'm not saying, we didn't give them a number and I'm just saying in, in my mind, I was thinking, you know, what can we do with, if we had a substantial amount of money, if, and if, if you could do a lot of different things, um, that would be great to know. I think that amount of guidelines have vastly limited how much money we're gonna be able to spend on broadband with the latest guidance. So I, I, while there was no guidance given to CS, CCG because the goal was to sort of, let's figure out what our options are. I think the federal guidelines have um, greatly reduced the options that we can spend it on. Do you know what, and based on the current guidelines, how much money we're talking about? Uh, no, that I want CCG to come. I'm, I don't want to get out ahead of them. So I'm going to let them speak to it because they're, they're still working through it. So I don't want to get out in front of them. But I would say I, I have asked. Um, I just sent an email off to Representative Briglin asking if it would be possible for us to join them tomorrow, um, so we get the opportunity to hear from the consultants without having to take another hour or so of their time. Senator Pearson, have you got a question? Yeah, just just Catherine, did you? It, can the money be spent? And the pole, the wires up, but not sort of filled with live internet. I, I'm wondering if there's a distinction mm. that you made there, were yeah. up and running. I think. You know, he, the answer. Well, that's a that's an interesting. The, the I would say that the federal guidelines have um, it has to be work specifically related to COVID health. It can't be just about expanding access generally to people. Uh, that can't be the goal. It has to be really about uh, the pandemic and the health issue, emergency. And they wrote, I can um, pull it up, but there was, they gave very limit, they really reduced the opportunity to use it in a way that I think we were all hoping to be able to use it. Um, and I, here we go. Let me just read to you. This is in the federal, let me find it, the federal guidelines. Um, uh, hang on, sorry, just a second. Let me find it. Because they spoke, they spoke specifically to broadband. Um, How did they define it? Okay. May, here was the question. May recipient, this is a frequently asked question from the Treasury. May recipients use fund payments to expand rural broadband capacity to assist with distance learning and telework? How do they define broadband? Mark, yeah, that's, one question at a time. Yeah. And that here was the answer. Such expenditures would only be permissible if they are necessary for the public health emergency. Projects that would not be expected to increase capacity to a significant extent 
until the need for distance learning and telework have passed due to this emergency, which would be necessary due to the public health emergency, and thus would not be eligible for uses of Fed of fund payments. So they're basically saying, if you're gonna give distance learning to people this fall right now, you, but you can't just use it to provide, expand um, capacity generally. And I, I can get you, I'll send a copy of this to um, Faith and she can distribute it to you. So I'm, I'm just saying to you that we we had lots of hopes and visions about spending this money and, the, and they, they keep narrowing the guidance from the feds. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I just find this so confusing because we wouldn't be in this situation where we had to do all the distance learning if all the schools hadn't closed. We're still in the middle of it. We don't have a vaccine. I, I don't understand. Catherine, can you help shed some light on this? Because sure. it's all related to the pandemic. I, I don't disagree with you. I think, you know, they may also change the deadline on the um, December 30th. They may, they may change it on this, but right now this is what's provided. And it's, it's tough because frankly, it changes for us also. We think we're going to do one thing and then they put this thing out and they say, oh, you can't do that, but you can sort of do this other thing. So it's, it's, um, I, I, I'm empathetic to your frustration. So, Senator McDonald, I think since these are federal guidelines, you can assume that they are referencing the federal definition of high speed, which I believe is 25, 3, 24, 3? 25, 3. 25, 3, yeah. yeah. And we've speculated here in the last 90 seconds on what they were up to, and it's, in my opinion, pretty clear that um, they wish to restrict the use of that money to stuff that can be done um, at 25.3 by profit, for-profit uh, stockholder owned companies because that's who they wanna send the money to. Not because it provides broadband and not because it's gonna be used by school kids for COVID. It is an excuse to send the money to that group of people to do um, to buy the product that they would like those people to be able to make money on. Well, I think these are some of the questions that we are looking to the consultant to answer. Right. And yes. among them, it would seem to me that if the focus, for example, is on telelearning, that if you uh, design a program to get broadband to every kid who doesn't have good broadband right now, we'd accomplish the same thing that we were probably trying to accomplish, but it's the way we word it and, and our focus. That notion of, of identifying uh, all the kids who don't have broadband right now would take us to the areas that we wanna reach. And if our focus is, for example, uh, no kid left offline, we could do that under these yeah. And I think it might be more important than ever that we get the information from the schools about where were the clusters of their kids that they have only heard from once or twice in the last three months. Um, and get that out. Senator Sorkin, did you have your hand up? You're muted, Senator. No, no. Okay, I got the thumbs down. All right, Senator Brock. Well, I mean, the one thing that, that I'm looking for in particular from the consultants to tell us is based on the plan uh, as, as articulated by the administration, by the Department of Public Service, uh, is it feasible to do what they want to do within the time frame and where they're talking about extending wires? Uh, it, to me, is highly questionable, just given the fact that we aren't going to be able to put up polls, for example, uh, from November on. And I, I just have a question as to whether we do it. That's what I'm, one of the things I'm looking for them to answer. The second is I'm looking for uh, the feasibility of alternatives that would still give us the broadband. And that is wireless to some extent. And we have this wireless proposal. We, we have a couple of wireless proposals. Now, uh, I want to make sure that they look at that in terms of a sanity check as well. Uh, Catherine, I think they are, aren't they? Yes, they are. They are. Yeah, that's, that's what I it's remember. Useful, it's useful to hear you say that also. And I, I can also point them to this lovely YouTube video so they can make sure that they get it, capture all of those issues. That's what they did 10 years ago. They sent most of the money for wireless and it they wasn't by any 
six month or eight month deadline. It took three and a half years to do it. Right. So. Well, we're going to work on it this time. We're going to learn. Senator Ballin. It seems like an integral part of this um, to speak to both uh, Senator McDonald's and Senator Brock's point is that we need to get the up-to-date data from AOE. And I, I know we had asked them for that. I'm wondering where we are in that process, whether they're uh, in communication with JFO, because that's gonna be an important piece of this in order to be able to craft it so right. that we can use the money for it. And we that's- have to know who those right. families are. Yeah, that's part, I've asked Secretary French for that before. That's part of what I hope to hear from him yesterday. Unfortunately, we ran very late on the floor and we had a conflict. So I'm gonna try and get him back next week. Um, I, I wanted might. to and see how they were going with collecting that data. And um, hopefully we can get this into something nice and tight and concise and make some improvement by the first of the year. Madam Senator Chair. Brock. Now I got Senator Brock. Then I'll get Senator McDonald. Yeah. Well, I think we need similar information and data from the health community. Now, whether that be through the Department of Health or, or otherwise, because as we start looking at using telemedicine, uh, I have not seen any data that says where we're using telemedicine, how effective, are there places uh, that we need to extend telemedicine that we don't? I would think, for example, where we have people who live relatively far away, say who live in the kingdom, far away from a hospital that the priority of getting telehealth to them, because people who are living next to the medical center hospital in Burlington perhaps have less of a, a telemedicine need, but we don't I, have any information, yeah. nor do I know if we've requested it. Well, health and welfare has been taking testimony on that. And again, I, I think that we, we can have, and probably next week, Faith is listening, um, have the, uh, hospital Association and the um, nursing home. And it's the big three. They're all working together. Um, uh, the, the group, it's Jill Olson. And sure, they, yeah, they, um, and they, you know, they're, they're finding like, it, it's not like we can't meet this whole group it's more sporadic and some of it is equipment, some of it is education. Um, it just doesn't fall in a nice straight line, but we'll have, we'll have them in next week because telemedicine is definitely part of this. And there are other grants for telemedicine um, and for veterans getting them in touch with telemedicine, which we, you know, if we could get someone to coordinate all of this, we might be able to put a nice creative package together, uh, looking at a couple of grants. So just, Randy, I'll let you finish and then I've got yeah, and Just also for, for Catherine and the consultants, uh, one of the things that's critically important, and, and I'd like to just make sure this is done, is that we take a look at all the various streams uh, uh, present already enacted and those that we anticipate that may flow into this, uh, looking at this year and also looking at, at the future, because all these things have to put together and they're critical for us to be able to design a strategy that makes sense. Yeah, we knew. We can come up with all the plans of where we wanna put poles and wires, but we've gotta have a way to pay for them yeah. at the same time if we don't want the private for profits to be doing it. Senator McDonald. Um, what, one of the differences, Madam Chair, between this, this event and 10 years ago was the federal government made the decision on who got the, where the money went. And that's why VTEL got the money. It wasn't us. I um, do remember tech, that. Yeah. On, oh, yeah. Um, you, anyway, um, the technology, um, they're different technologies that serve better in different places. And the towers in places that are flat in the Northeast Kingdom is one that may decide that towers are best for them. But that doesn't apply everywhere. Um, we, if we had our choice of 
spending money on telecom or some other area that was equally um, needed, also needed money. And we could only spend our money on telecom of 25.5. And we know that when you put up more 25.5, you um, make it more difficult to get um, world-class broadband over the long haul. We might choose not to use it. And we might choose to use the COVID money for other things that fit our long range um, solutions. But I, I, I am loath to rush down a path that goads us into spending money that's going to undermine our long term goals and make it more difficult and more expensive to get these services to all Vermonters. And I hope that our, our consultants um, and that would be um, Catherine would would speak be speaking to them now would be very clear about um, how the money would be what the value we would get if we made the twenty five three or what the value would be if we went with Vermont state policy and what we would win and what we would lose. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, and I'm sure we will have that deduction or that discussion. But to balance it, I'll have the lobbyist in who lives five miles from Montpelier and is just past the last poll and is working on 5-1. And she would give her right arm for 25, three or five. Okay. And well, I don't maybe, want to see Vermonters walking around with one arm. I don't. And I might want to. What a gentleman. Bend my <laughs> principles a little bit to get those kids hooked up and there's a there's a lot of people in there and eventually we're going to make that value decision as to where is the best place to spend the money in the short it's, run and in the long run okay Sandra Pearson it strikes me that there's not going to be one strategy there will be some yep. places where we'll be fine granting a little bit of money to give two more people some cable internet because they're you know half a mile too far and uh and this is why we're so dependent on a consultant because we can't possibly gain the expertise to do <laughs> planning and we struggle because there's no larger plan that we can take off the first bite of here and so i i mean if people want to hear from the various Lobbyists, I think that's fine. I, I'd be more interested in waiting for the consultant who presumably has thought of all the clever questions that we can come up with and could give us something of a holistic view so that we can get our heads around it. Um, that may be just me. I think the only lobbyists I'm going to invite in are the ones from the hospital and the visiting nurses uh, to get some information on telemedicine uh, for this committee. So, because that's the other side of broadband. We've got distance learning, we've got distance working, and we have telemedicine, all of which are eligible, at least I think, for some granting. Um, so, I, I, we should have a whole picture as to where the issues are, and we have not heard on telemedicine. Senator Campion. Sorry if this has already been, uh asked, but what is the timeline for the consultants to get back to us, Catherine? Uh, June 12th, so next Friday. Wow, okay. So it's very quick, like it, it's not gonna solve everybody's things, but this has actually been a very sure. useful discussion to hear whatever everybody's sort of big picture thoughts are. And um, anyway, yeah, next Friday. Which is why they haven't been spending a lot of time with us. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm hoping we, it'll be okay with the house. If not, we can watch the YouTube of it tomorrow afternoon rather than have committee and at least get to see who they are and what their thinking is at the moment. Senator Brock. I, I guess just the only concern that I have about the consultants and when Catherine and I talked about it is this is a $14,000 contract right. and we're all used to dealing with uh, consultants, particularly in the technology area. 
14,000 buys very little. And that's a caveat that really does concern me a bit. Right. That we make what we paid for. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're, but we may get enough direction to know what we need to pay for again. <laughs> and, you know, we'll, we'll see where that one goes. Okay, any other questions? Catherine, have you got anything else to tell us? Catherine, right can you now. just respond to that? About the, what, what they know and what, what, well, I mean, how much we can expect. Yeah, did they say this is the uh, discount uh, fee, or was it does the fee <laughs> reflect the fact that it's ten days of work? I think it were, they they're working hard and they're talking like they've talked to the secretary of education. They are talking to uh, some. Actually, there was uh, somebody who worked for the agency who's gone to work for a district who actually knows a lot about the individual techno technological access in schools. They have been doing um, a fair amount of work on this and talking to. A people and talking to other states also to get the ideas about what their states are thinking about doing. Um, so the answer is, I think they're working hard, but I also, they're not going to answer every, it's, it's, it's not going to be a report that solves all, gives you a guide map to everything to solve everything in broadband. It's, you know, it's a short term quick project and we can see how the work goes with them. And um, they certainly have expertise in, in, in this area. So hopefully it will be useful. That's, that's my goal. And I think it will, it's, um, you know, trying to figure out what you're going to do right now with, if you're going to do what you want, if you want to do something, what you want to do and how it makes sense is important. And we don't have a lot of time to figure that out. So I think they will be very helpful in that context. And, and I'm absolutely hopeful that they will be, but, you know, I look at, at 10 days of work, eight hours a day for $14,000, that's $175 per, per professional hour. And the typical lawyer in Burlington in a, me in a, a medium to large size practice charges between three and five hundred dollars an hour. The the big four uh, partners and senior managers charge in that range, and so the rate that we're being charged, frankly, is just so low it makes me suspect. Okay, maybe they're hoping we'll come back. The loss uh, leak. So, yeah. <laughs> so okay, any other questions at this point? And where is? My agenda, no, has gone away again. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, and I think that's that for Catherine. We actually thought we might, we have a break scheduled at three, um, just because we're trying to schedule everybody. And at this point, mostly working with staff's time um, I'm not sure how many committees Faith is juggling as we speak, but more than one. Um, I so uh, I think Catherine, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. And thank we'll, you. Yeah. Hopefully we can get into the meeting tomorrow.